Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the Transformation Extender product from IBM. The topic for this video is URL decoding with Transformation Extender. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. In this practical demonstration, we're going to start with decoding a simple string of URL encoded characters. Then we're going to switch to creating a type tree that we're going to use to read a more complicated string with a mixture of single bytes and URL encoded bytes. Then we're going to create a map to decode only the relevant parts, giving you the final output of the full string. Decoding a simple URL encoded string with ITX is easy. Let me show you my input file. We have a string of URL encoded characters. Each character is represented with three bytes, the first byte being a percent symbol, the next two bytes being a hex representation of the character. So let's start a project and show how we would decode this string. My new project is called URL decode underscore simple and I'm going to move my input file into the project. If I refresh my project, you will see the input file appear in the miscellaneous section. First step is to create a type tree. So as you can see, I've built a simple type tree with a simple single text item object. Next thing to do is to analyze structure and logic and then save the file. Next step is to build a map. For my map, I'm going to have one input card called in1 the type tree I'm going to use is the generic type tree that I created just now, and within that, the text item object. The file I'm going to read is input.txt, and that's my input card complete. Let's build an output card. I'm going to call my output card out1. I'm going to use exactly the same type tree, exactly the same type object, and I'm going to write to a file called output.txt. Now for my rule, first I'm just going to drag the in1 object to the out1 object. I'm going to save, build and run the map. Now the reason for running the map now is to create the file, the output file, and then drag that into the canvas so that we can see this update as we make changes to the map. So at the moment, my input is copied directly to my output. So what functions do we need to do to decode this? Well, the first function we need to do is get rid of those percent symbols. And I do this with a simple substitute function. I'm reading in one, I'm looking for percent, and I'm replacing it with nothing. Save, build, run. Now we just have a simple string of hex bytes. We need to encapsulate the result that we have here in another function, hex text to stream. Save, build, and run. And in the output window, we can see now that the URL string has been completely decoded. Client underscore secret equals, and then in angle brackets, the word secret. So that's the simple example. Let's move on to the more complex example. For the next part of the demo, I shall be using a longer string which contains a mixture of standard single bytes and URL characters to decode. So on the left, you can see HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, etc. All of these characters would need to be treated exactly as is and just passed through with no change. However, when a three byte sequence that begins with a percent symbol is found, these characters need to be sent for decoding, and then the final string needs to be displayed. Back in the design studio now, and as you can see, I have created a project called URL decode underscore mixed. I've copied in my input.txt file that contains the content shown in the previous slide. It is a mixture of single bytes and URL encoded characters. OK, so how do we deal with these? The first thing we need to do is create a type tree that can recognize when there is a three byte sequence starting with a percent symbol. And if there isn't one, treat each byte as a normal byte. I've created a type tree called input.mtt. Now the first object I'm going to add is URL encoded. Now this will be a URL encoded byte, which is really a sequence of three bytes. So I'm going to change the object from category to item. 
and I'm going to set the byte size as a maximum of two and a minimum of two. This is two of the hex bytes at the end of the three byte sequence is going to be data and the first byte is going to be swallowed up by an initiator. I'm going to turn that on to literal and then I'm going to set the value as a percent symbol. So this object is all ready to read the URL encoded byte. Now we need another object to read standard bytes. We're going to change the size from maximum one byte, minimum of one byte. Okay, now we need a choice group to pick between these two as we read each byte of data. The default is to create it as a sequence group. Now we're not doing a sequence, we're doing a choice. So I'm going to change this to choice here. And then I'm going to double click on byte choice and bringing the two different choices. Now we have to look for URL encoded first so that it can check if the first character is a percent symbol and if it isn't it will reject that object and move on to the next object which is a standard byte. If I did it the other way around it would of course read in the percent symbol as a standard byte and would read all three bytes of a URL encoded byte as individual bytes and that's no good to us so it has to be done this way around. Okay, so the sequence we have so far reads only one byte, either standard or URL encoded. Now we need another object that will loop through and read all of the data in the stream. Double click on file and say that it contains multiple byte choices. Right click, set the range between zero and S for infinity. Let's analyze the structure and logic of this type tree. Now we save the file. Next step is to create a map source file. Within the map source, I'm going to create one map and I'm going to define an input card called in1. The type tree we're going to use is the type tree we just created, input.mtt, and we're going to grab from that the file object. The file we're going to read is input.txt. And now we can build and run our map to see whether the input can be read successfully. Map completed successfully. This is good. No output has been created yet. Before we can create an output card, we need to create an output type tree. My type tree is called output.mtt. I've created one single object called byte. Now I could change the size to be max one and min one bytes. It's not absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. I've now created a file group object and within the file group object which is a sequence I'm going to double click on that and drag in the children which is multiple bytes so I need to set the range from 0 to s for infinity and that's the output type tree complete let's build structure and logic that looks good save and close the output tree I can now create my output card as you can see, my output card is called out. It uses the output.mtt type tree we just created, and from that, the file object, and we're writing to a file called output.txt. I'm going to put a rule of equals none here at the moment. Save, build, and run the map, just to create the output file. So I can open it up on the development canvas and have that reflect the changes as we alter the map. Now we've got multiple repeating objects here and multiple repeating objects here. So we do need a functional map at this point to drop down to a functional map and process each of those repeating objects. I'm going to call my map f underscore each byte and drag in the byte choice object from the input and then use the functional map wizard to create that map for me. If I drop down to the functional map f underscore each byte we can see that on the input side we have access to either our URL encoded byte or the standard byte. One or other of these will be complete with data, but not both. So here we need an either function. Into my either function, I'm going to drag in the two objects. I'm going to say that I want to check the URL encoded byte first, and then if that doesn't exist, I want to bring in the standard byte. I double click now on my executable map, save, build and run we will get the input string, and because we haven't done anything to the URL encoded bytes, we are going to get the first byte of each of the hex pairs. And the next thing to do is to add on the all important hex text to stream function. 
and we put that around the URL encoded object. Now back to our executable map, say build and run. And as you can see, the full string has been completely decoded where necessary from client secret onwards. And yet the original bytes that weren't encoded have been brought across completely intact. So there we have it. Two examples of how to decode URL encoded data, either all in or as mixed with individual bytes. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button and maybe leave a comment. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on popular social media channels at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.